What is up, y'all? This is JT. This is the new, or it's new, or I don't know if it's brand new, but the skill version of the skill saw. It's a, a little bit different than the skill saw, but it's it's made by like the the new company that bought them out. I'm not sure what company it is, but it's a 15 amp, 10 inch, super portable, and we're gonna unbox it. Because I haven't seen a lot of unboxings and I haven't seen a lot of, you know, setups and whatnot of this tool. But it's such a budget price tool. And I don't understand why. And for a long time I couldn't even find the tool. What's up, buddy? So right off the bat, you'll notice things like the uh, miter gauge and push stick. Everything's going to be plastic on this versus metal. It looks like there's some assembly involved. And it does have guards. I believe it has a rising knife on it. And it has a kickback stopper, which is partial metal, partial plastic. So, let me set this out of the way. And it comes in the box upside down. Which is very strange. The uh, table on it's aluminum. You can see a lot of the different parts. Let's bring it in closer so you can see some of the parts. So as you can see, this is not the worm drive version. This is the uh, do-it-yourself home version. Uh, it's got locks on the uh, legs. It's got a little styrofoam in between there. It's got plastic gears on the raising and lowering mechanism, which, I mean, I assume these are going to last a little while, but if there is any problem, I'm sure that you can buy replacement parts for this, so it's no big deal. The savings. The savings! But, uh, yeah. You, can, you got a little place to hook your dust port and the dust port was right there it's in the top you got this piece this piece you got your push stick and this you angle into a bucket or you can hook it up to a vacuum if you choose this particular saw comes with a three-year warranty I'm not sure if you have to register it to do that probably and then Ooh, that is open. So let us not lose these pieces. And let's set you guys back up on the tripod so that I can bust this out of the box. Are you gonna do it for me? Are you gonna do it for me? Go pull this. Heavy, heavy son of a gun out of here. Oh boy! There goes the back. Uh -oh. The uh, fence is not attached. There's more parts on the bottom. Watch out, bud. Watch out. Got some zip ties to cut. Got these monitors. 
monster zip ties here. I like to try to save them. Gone. Just like that. This one looks like I can just slide it off. Then get to the back side of it. about the little ones. Cut that one. Hopefully not scratch on the floor too much. Right off the bat, um, this does not look especially great. It also needs to be adjusted because it's actually sitting low on the table. And this, which I believe would be the exit point, has like a little bit of a got a little bit of a metal little metal plate that. Uh, yeah, that's sitting up way high. So all that's probably adjustable. And what I like about this model versus say the, the rigid $350 model is the fence is uh, a fully adjustable, but it locks into these pins. That way when, ah, see, that's where the knob goes. So when you are unlocked and you're moving this, your fence stays square to your blade as long as you square it to your blade. And there is some slight deviation from this one to that one. So always double check and make sure you're good on your measurements. Ew. Oh, and I'll stuff that in there. So we got our height. And it comes with a blade on it, apparently. So that is the full height. And yes, this is capable of going through a 4x4 if you wanted to rip a 4x4. Um, it has a stopper on zero, and I do believe if you push it, there's a way to release it so it goes further, and you can adjust it as well. Okay, so it's this little, you just push this in. And you can go two degrees past, but we'll try to lock it in at 90. And the safety switch has a little deal on it. So here's where your push, push stick goes. Your cord wraps around these little fingers and your miter gauge goes here. I'm not sure where the fence goes without reading the instructions. Um, 
I don't know, maybe it just stays on the saw. Uh, if I have any more information in the future, I will let you know. The stand itself is very solidly built. The legs, very solid. The uh, lashes are very solid. And like I said, it's got this one adjustable leg. Uh, I'd have to actually read up on how to adjust it. But so far it's looking kind of spiffy. And it's got a 24 tooth extra fine finish. I don't even think that's possible, but okay. And it's got the uh, writing knife, pretty solid. A little bit of give, but not too much. Oh, buddy, no, 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 no. We don't, we don't tear up that. So, what I'll have to do is put it together and we'll see what it does. Okay, so I've got this uh, pretty well put together, not adjusted yet. Everything is together. I got the uh, anti kickback and the blade guard. This. Uh, I think the 45 on this needs to be adjusted and I do believe the uh, or I mean the 90 sorry about that and there's a couple other adjustments you have to measure so you're gonna measure from your miter stops or I mean your miter slots and make sure that the blade is square in this direction and there is adjustments on it not fully sure how they work I have to get into the instructions for that but I do believe it's this knob right here it's very hard to see but the instructions are right here so that's not too bad and uh, the teeth on this, I do believe are aluminum. So if you could find the exact gear, you could replace that, make it a little bit nicer. The uh, miter gauge tools right here. The uh, vacuum port elbow goes right there. Pretty much when you're storing the saw, I would assume that you just leave your guard and your fence on top because there's no other way, of, no other place to mount them. And yeah, that's about it. Beautiful. Not bad for the price. Now the model number is TS6307. And there's a whole lot of instructions on how to adjust, and how to use the saw correctly. And apparently it's in like five different languages. It even shows you how to do rabbits, bevel cross cutting, miter cutting, uh, non through sawing basically like dadoing or uh, rabbiting using the rip fence different stuff the creepy sound you're hearing in the background is my cat she's actually blind but this very solidly stays in there uh, the metal. I mean, it's a three hundred dollars saw, two ninety nine plus tax out the door. This has two different positions. It can go um, tabletop position, which is hard to do. 
So I don't know what you'd use that for, but you could maybe super thin uh, plywood. And then also when the fence is out, extends the table there is a little bit of slop like even when it's locked down I'll show you if I put this in it's got about 25 inch rip but it'll go all the way to about 25 and 3 quarters and that's with it set on the end one but even even when you lock this down, pushing downward, there's not a lot of slop, but like there is a little bit of slop. So it's pretty solid for a $300 saw. I got to be honest with you. Um, I, I carried this home in my Mitsubishi Eclipse. I do not advise that because the box is actually pretty huge. So now all you got to do is adjust it and then try it out unfortunately right now it is snowing so we'll have to get back to that another time uh, i gotta read the instructions figure out how to fix and adjust everything that's not exactly correct because i do believe the 90 degree is off and there's so many different ways to adjust and like can adjust these I don't know if these are adjustable if they are that may be the best route but I don't know if they are they may be solid because they're in there I'm not really sure how but they're in there so if these are adjustable that may be your best route. We'll find out. This is the saw. Basically, it's a folded up form with everything attached to it except for the uh, one uh, hex key. And I don't know what, if it has a spot or not. It's got these weird hooks right here. This may be for the writing, or I mean the uh, blade guard. But as for the uh, anti-kickback, I'm not sure where that goes. This is probably in the instructions, but you just basically just grab it by this handle. And it's really, I mean, it's not too bad to carry around. This is why I wanted this particular saw versus the ones with the uh, rolling stands, because the rigid is only $50 more. But this one is quite a bit more portable, and I do believe this one's lighter by about 10 pounds or so. But uh, you'll have to look up the specs to find out. So far, without even using it, it's a pretty well-built saw for a DIY. Now you might want to actually grease these up a little bit. That way it'll keep them protected. Just watch what you use because uh, some petroleum products will actually disintegrate plastic so keep that in mind and it does have a three-year warranty if you register it and I do believe it has a one-year warranty if you don't so that's all for now until I can get it adjusted and get it somewhere where I can make some cuts but like I said it is snowing No snow. Fun, fun. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.